Hey guys, Rick Stone here from the blog Our Stony Acres and the Online Gardening School. Welcome to 5-Minute Fridays, my video series where I give you a valuable gardening tip in 5 minutes or less. Before we get started this week, please make sure that you subscribe to my YouTube channel or if you're watching this on Facebook, make sure that you like my Stony Acres Facebook page. It's fall, it's uh, the middle of November and uh, it's starting to get cold. It's windy today but a nice bright sunshiny day so I thought I'd go out and see if we could talk for a few minutes about hoop houses. Last week we talked about cold frames, this week I want to talk to you about hoop houses and how you can use them to extend your growing season. Now we love to have a hoop house, at least one, sometimes two, in our yard and they're a great option in our cold climate for extending the season. They're not so good for going all the way through the winter, but they actually work out really well for just extending the growing season on either side of the winter and we'll talk a little bit more about why here in a minute. Some crops that are really good for growing in hoop houses would be anything tall, so things like broccoli, cabbage, Brussels sprouts, even kale, Swiss chard, those all do really well in a hoop house and you can extend your growing season for all of those crops. It also does really well for things like carrots, beets, radishes, turnips, anything like that will do really well in a hoop house also. Uh, the one thing that I have found that a hoop house won't do for someone that lives in a really cold area. So we live in a 6A and we're right on the edge of that cold area definition. So anything colder than zone 6, you're for sure going to struggle getting things to overwinter in a hoop house. There's just not as much protection inside a hoop house and so you, you can't overwinter things like lettuce and some of the more tender winter crops uh, just won't do as well because there's just not as much insulation value here. So, and so a hoop house where it's just covered in plastic, you just don't have quite as much insulation value there. And uh, it's also really noisy when you're trying to film a video. Uh, so think about when you're using a hoop house and you live in a zone six or below, think about uh, only putting very hardy crops in it. So spinach, kale, Swiss chard, mosh, maybe some sorrel, um, those kind of things will do really well in a hoop house all the way through the winter. But a lot of your other crops are not going to handle the extra cold that's there with a hoop house. It just doesn't offer the same protection as a cold frame. So think about that uh, when you're choosing what crops you're going to plant in a hoop house like this. Okay, so now let's talk about building a hoop house. They're actually really quite simple. The first thing that you need is kind of a rib structure and that's, we use PVC pipe for that. So we use the PVC because it's inexpensive. They're only about $1.50 each. Uh, this entire hoop house is about $20 is all we spent on it. So you put together that, that rib structure and you want to attach it. If you've got a raised bed, you want to attach it to the bed either by just screwing directly into the PVC pipe or you can even use those little U-clamps if you'd like. If you're, if you're not putting it on a raised bed, then you've got a couple of options. You can either build a wooden frame and attach it to that frame or if you want, you can just pound some rebar into the ground and then slip the pipes over the top of the rebar. Now the most important part of the structure of a hoop house is actually to make sure that you have a ridge pole. So you need to make sure that there's a ridge pole in there. It doesn't have to be fancy, mine's just improvised. You can see I just you know, pieced it together with a couple of, of scrap pieces of lumber. But it's important that you kind of tie everything together with that ridge pole. It makes the structure, structure a lot more rigid and it helps it to stand up to the wind. Then you just cover everything with plastic and we use just a, a five mil painter's plastic. You don't need to go fancy, uh, just inexpensive stuff. This has been on for four years and, and is lasting really well. And then we take some boards and we put them at the bottom and we, we screw the plastic in on one side, then we stretch it tight and then screw it in on the other side. And then you've got a couple of different options that you can use for your ends. And so this year, so that I could show you the different options, I, I did both. So let's take a look at the first. This is the south end of my hoop house and you can see I just let the plastic be extra long and I just basically folded it over hit it with a clamp and then we just uh, screwed in the bottom part so that it doesn't flap around in the wind. Now the problem with that is you can't get in that way. Uh, so the north end down here is actually the end that we get into and it's what I did here is I cut a piece of plastic that was roughly about 6 to 12 inches wider than the opening and then we secured it at the bottom with a board and then we just tuck that plastic in 
underneath the top layer of plastic and throw in a few clamps. And that holds everything together really well. And then when we need to get in and out of the cold frame, all we have to do is take the clamps off and pull that plastic out. We can access the cold frame really easily that way. So great way to just simple build. Uh, there are a lot of fancy hoop houses out there. And that, those are great if you want to go to the effort of making one that has hinges and opens that way. Or I've seen some that accordion and those are great too. But those are more expensive and they're a pain in the neck to put together. This is really simple. I can put this hoop house up in about 15 minutes uh, after I've put it together the first year. So really simple, really cheap. $20 is about all it costs and it's a great option for extending your, your growing season. So now if you'd like to learn more about winter gardening, year-round gardening, uh, gardening in the fall and in the spring, uh, then I would suggest that you take a look at my year-round gardening course. This is a five-hour video course that I filmed that's going to teach you all the ins and outs of growing in hoop houses and cold frames and extending your growing season to a 365-day-a-year harvest like we have. So that course is available on the Online Gardening School. If you look in the links below, either in the comment section or in the description, there will be a link that will take you through to that course and it's on sale right now for $20, so half off. Uh, so it's a great option, go take a look at it. All right, that's all I have for this week. I hope you could hear with all the wind blowing. Uh, everybody have a great week, enjoy your week, and happy gardening.